Good morning, Dreamhouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us today from the Celebration Bowl is John Grant. But before we get to John, we're going to do what our listeners love when we do it, is give out our email address, which is dreamhousenation at gmail.com. That's dreamhousenation at gmail.com. And of course, the reason why we do that, that means we're giving away prizes. So feel free to write into dreamhousenation at gmail.com to win some Celebration Bowl swag. John, thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. We're delighted to be here. So what is the Celebration Bowl? Well, I'd like to first give deference to our title sponsor, which is Cricket. Uh, So the Cricket Celebration Bowl is a national championship bowl game for historically black colleges and youth colleges and universities at the Division One level. So we culminate the season uh, with a bowl game here in Atlanta that pits the champion of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference against the champion of the Southwestern Athletic Conference. Nice. So how did it all get started? Well, I would say Dr. Then Commissioner of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, Dr. Dennis Thomas, working with Pete Derzis, who was Vice President of ESPN Events, the events division of ESPN and uh, Burke Mangus, who's the president of ESPN production, sort of work together to culminate the idea of a bowl game for these two conferences, the Southwestern Athletic Conference and the Eastern Athletic Conference. The chancellors and presidents approved that uh, idea. They worked on it for almost 10 years, but they approved it in uh, 2014 and the bowl game launched uh, December 15th of 2015 here in Atlanta at then the Georgia Dome um, in Atlanta, Georgia. Nice. I was going to say great venue. Now, I think you've already mentioned it, but I'm going to ask you it anyways. How do you decide who plays in the Celebration Bowl? Well, again, it's determined by um, by, by contract. The champions of the the two conferences, again, the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference and the Southwestern Athletic Conference, which are the, the two Division One H. Uh, uh, HBCU conferences, their champions come uh, and participate in the bowl game, representing the two conferences. Nice. So, when is the uh, cricket celebration bowl? We host the game with where we actually are part of opening the college football bowl season and have been since 2015. So this year, the game is on December 17th, and we're we're generally the third Saturday in December. Um, which is a part of what we call the bowl opening weekend. So just like other sports, like uh, baseball, opening day is a big thing. Of course, with college bowls, being one of the first bowls, you really get the fans kicked off. You get them excited about celebrating uh, college football. And that's the beauty of the bowls is they go pretty much all through December and uh, into January. You know, and that part is true. And the the additional uniqueness about the Cricket Celebration Bowl is it is a championship game. So you look at opening the bowl season with a national championship game, and you close the bowl season with the college football playoff championship games, which is a national championship game that closes the season. So we, we you know we're delighted to be in that position. The game is televised. Um, on ABC, and we have been since uh, our inaugural game in 2015. Nice. So how can the Dreamhouse Nation – oh, actually, you already answered that one. Uh, so you, where did you say you can watch it on? On ABC. Awesome. Uh, the game is televised live on ABC. We, kick, we have a 12 noon kick, uh, and just, you know, it's a perfect time of, of day because, you know, it's wonderful if you're on the East Coast uh, at 12 noon, and if you're out West, there's people are just waking up and – at 9 a.m., they can, can tune into this um, outstanding competition. That is awesome. And then, of course, you all play such a, uh, at such a beautiful stadium. Uh, tell us about the benefits of that. Wow. You know, you can't. I don't think there's a better venue um, in, in, in for college sports than Mercedes-Benz Stadium. Of course, now you've, you've had some new ones open up at, uh, with SoFi out in L.A., and, and, and I know they've opened the new one out up in many – Minneapolis uh, for the Vikings, but Mercedes-Benz Stadium is just an a wonderful venue in such a great city, and it's also wonderful because 
it you know it, it's in what we call uh, like th- that district. So you're you're within walking distance of of a number of hotels directly to the venue, and um, it's just a it's a great place for a great fan experience, and we love being there. Speaking of great places, where is the best place for the Dreamhouse Nation to buy tickets to the Cricket Celebration Bowl? Well, if you visit our website at www.thecelebrationbowl.com, that's www.thecelebrationbowl.com. Now, of course, you know, the game obviously is the crown jewel of the weekend, but I understand there's a lot of other great things that go on during the weekend. Tell us a little bit about those. Well, for us, the, you know, the bowl game is is really about first about creating an, an outstanding uh, experience for the players, the student athletes that have earned the opportunity to play in, in this championship game. And that's what really bowls are about as well. So we have activities starting on Wednesday that are that are pretty much focused on the players with a Taste of Atlanta welcome dinner. Um, that's sponsored by the Coca-Cola Company. We have a partnerships uh, with with the NFL, and on Thursday they get to uh, engage with the NFL on careers in the NFL off the field. So when they graduate, they can 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 look at other opportunities to stay close to the game, um, but you know, sort of off the field opportunities there. Um, Thursday we have our Champion Circle Showcase, where we're really featuring the the you know the two. Uh, universities and and the players as champions at the College Football Hall of Fame, uh, and we have some induction ceremonies that take place at at that. Um, Friday we have t- for two days our fan experience opens on Friday night from six until nine. We have con- um, shows and concerts there, and our corporate activations and free food and music. Uh, and and then again on Saturday when it reopens, we have band showcases. So the college bands. Uh, get to perform in a head to head there with also two high school bands and also our corporate partners before people go in inside uh, the stadium for the game. Awesome. I'm glad I was reading the thing incorrectly earlier because uh, I read the taste of cricket celebration and I was like, they eat crickets. Wow. That, I mean, I know some people <laughs> do, but uh, that seemed a little odd. So, of course, it's the cricket part is more about the. Uh, the sponsor, the title sponsor, as opposed to actual cricket crickets. That is correct. That's correct. Uh, you know, we the Coca Cola Company has a fantastic dinner. It's called the Taste of Atlanta. Um, you know, uh, at the World of Coke, and so the the players get to not only come in and and have a wonderful experience there, but they get to taste the Coca Cola products from all around the world. Um, and tour that tour that venue, which is a wonderful venue and experience experience there. That is awesome. And then, of course, the part that our fans can experience is the Coca Cola fan experience. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, this, this is Coca Cola fan experience is our is our pregame corporate activation area. Uh, we open on Friday evening from six until nine p.m. and there's a lot of food and swag giveaways and in engagement with the, uh, many of our partners. And then on Friday night, we have a, uh, a Sprite stage where there's actually a concert taking place on Friday night. And then we reopen again on Saturday um, at 8.30 a.m. And on Saturday, it, it's, we, we, have, we feature the band. Uh, the college bands uh, are in a face-off. And then we have two of, the, of Metro Atlanta's premier high school bands that are also part of a face-off. And again, a lot of vendors, a lot of food, um, activations with our corporate partners that are uh, it's outstanding. This year is huge. We're almost building a city nice. uh, around that. So it's, it's, it's going to be an outstanding experience for the fans to, to come out before the game uh, and really um, enjoy what, what we have to offer. I was going to say, the more I hear about it, the more I want to ask my wife, because unfortunately she's in charge of me, if I can go down and cover this in person, because this sounds like this is going to be an amazing weekend. It is. You know, we're really excited. I can tell you that our tickets are moving rapidly. We're going to have a sellout crowd again this year. The game was sold out last year. And the tickets are selling a lot faster this year than they even did last year. So right now we know that North Carolina Central University will represent the Mideastern Athletic Conference 
And uh, we will know December 3rd uh, who will represent the Southwestern Athletic Conference after the SWAC championship game, which uh, we know that Jackson State and Coach uh, Deion Sanders have secured uh, the East Division. And um, it looks like they'll probably be playing against Prairie View A&M, who will represent the West. Uh, to determine who who will come to the Cricket Celebration Bowl this year. Oh, heck yeah. Prime time at the Cricket Celebration Bowl. That is phenomenal. And then you mentioned uh, the sellout last year. I understand that was a record for you all. What do you equate the surge in interest? Well, I, you know, some would probably say, and I would, wouldn't hesitate to add to that, that it was the prime effect. Um, that was um, Coach Sanders' first year. Um, as head coach of Jackson State, and Jackson State had a record year in the history of the school where they went 11 um, and 1. And so coming into here last year, um, his first time back in Atlanta, first time uh, coaching in um, Mercedes-Benz Stadium, certainly a lot of people drew a lot of interest from people. But also, you know, you have to give credit to the people from South Carolina State. It was their first time. Uh, they have a large contingent of people as well. But, you know, the Cricket Celebration Bowl is really like the Super Bowl for HBCUs. And that's what we're, we're, we're billing it as, and that's what we're building it out as. So when you've got a great venue, you've got a championship game, you have wonderful experiences, all of those are contributing factors to what we experienced last year. Definitely. And then I know uh, you can't uh, show any favoritism or anything like that, but the uh, the MEAC, it really feels like they have dominated the uh, the the rivalry. They have. I mean, you you're looking uh, this year is year number seven, uh, and the MEAC have they've won um, well five out of six of the games played. North Carolina A and T represented the MEAC for a number of years before they moved um, to the Big South. So you know they won um, they won. Four, is I might saying that right? I think four uh, of the Celebration Bowl uh, appearances they were in, and Grambling University has the lone win for the SWAT. Nice, and I was going to say a great historic program there. Historic program, absolutely. Um, it was, but that was a thriller of a game. They played against North Carolina Central, who who will be representing me at this year, um, and won the game um, on a blocked point after attempt with time running out. So our, the, these, the bowl games have been exciting. They've been close. Um, and in true championship caliber, when you have uh, two championship teams playing against each other. Nice. Now, for those that are going to be watching at home, uh, last year you had Mark Jones, you had Robert Griffin III. You had a really great uh, game. Uh, people calling the game. Tell us about that. Well, we do, uh, and and um, we we like to call them the A team. Uh, so, with Mark Jones, Jay Walker, um, Robert Griffin the third, and and uh, who who has called the, you know, he he made his debut appearance at another game that we do here in Atlanta called the Cricket Again Me Act Act Challenge Kickoff. It's a Week Zero game that opens the college football season, and he made his debut at that game in uh, twenty. 21 and and to see how his career has has just um, taken off we're really excited to say we've been a part of that but we also have Tiffany Green who is a who, who is this tremendous voice uh, uh, on our sidelines and is they, she actually performs the role of game host so we're one of the only games that has what we will call a host for the game the overall game itself and um you know, we're really excited about how she, the leadership she provides from that position. That is phenomenal. Before we let you go, where on social media, where on the web, where can we find out more about the Cricket Celebration Bowl? Okay, um, and thank that's wonderful, and thank you to your fans and your listeners. We we really appreciate all the support that we get from from them and our and in viewing this game. But you can certainly visit our website at www.thecelebrationbowl dot com for you know information and tickets and for the game and certainly you can follow us on instagram facebook and twitter 
Sounds phenomenal, John. It has been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Black Friday price is now available at Appliance Factory. Save up to 40 to 80% on thousands of in-stock appliances and mattresses. Largest inventory in Ohio, Appliance Factory gets exclusive factory buys from manufacturers at huge discounts, and they pass the savings on to you. Guaranteed to beat Lowe's and Home Depot's Black Friday sale prices. Save up to 40 to 80% on GE, Maytag, KitchenAid, Bosch, all the major brands. Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has inventory. They have all the best selections on Purple, Dream Cloud, Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, unbeatable savings. Black Friday prices now at Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom. Good morning, Dreamhouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us today from the Myrtle Beach Bowl is Johnny Williams. But before we get to Johnny, we're going to give out our email address, and our listeners know when we give out our email address, that means we're giving out prizes. Our email address is dreamhousenation at gmail.com. That's dreamhousenation at gmail.com. So write in to win some prizes from the Myrtle Beach Bowl. Johnny, thank you for joining us today. Well, James, great to be with you and your listeners. So how or what is the Myrtle Beach Bowl? Well, the Myrtle Beach Bowl, we're, we're actually in our third year. We're the only, uh, we were the first and only college bowl game in the state of South Carolina located uh, in um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And so we're a very young bowl, but, uh, but the bowl is partnered with us. Uh, Conference USA, the Sun Belt, and the MAC are our three leagues that we draw from, and it is just a tremendous location to, for college football. That is awesome. So, how did it get started? Well, a little bit of weather problems. About five, six years ago, if you may, you may remember when the hurricane hit Puerto Rico and we really devastated the island, um, ESPN uh, had a basketball event there. You know, called the Puerto Rican Shootout, and that game was not being able to be played. So they found out, they were looking for a site on in the continental United States. And they reached out to Myrtle Beach, uh, Coastal Carolina University. Actually, they moved that basketball event, which actually starts today of all things, in there in, in, in Coastal Carolina for the basketball event. And as they uh, brought that event to South Carolina, they r- realized the uh, the potential for Myrtle Beach of being a great site for a bowl. Uh, of course, Coastal Carolina football, which is relatively new, it's I think it's only been around about 20 years. But the last six or seven years, they've had really good football. I think this week they're actually ranked back in the top 25. So there's a lot of interest for football in the market. And uh, the, the Chamber of Commerce there in Myrtle Beach kind of recruited ESPN. And ESPN actually owns this event. It's one of uh, 17 bowl games that ESPN owns and operates. And so a group was reached about five, four and a half years ago to bring a, a college bowl game to Conway to Coastal Carolina's football stadium. And, uh, and so here we are. We've like we're starting our third, having our third game this coming uh, December. That is awesome. Now, I figure if I keep saying this, someone is eventually will steal my ideal and it'll be a reality because I keep saying we need a bowl in uh, Cincinnati. We need a chili bowl because we have a lot of great restaurants in uh, the Cincinnati area that I think would be perfect and we could have the game at Paul Brown Stadium. I think it would be huge. So hopefully one of these days someone will steal. (laughs) I agree with you. You know, bowl games have been around over 100 years. I guess Rose Bowl Grand Daddy of them all, but what, they're community based. You know, volunteers, local community people felt like put the games on, and now we think this past year we had 41 bowl games. There's probably room for another one or two. Nice. So, when is the Myrtle Beach Bowl? It is December the 19th, Monday afternoon, 2 30 Eastern Time. Uh, it's actually the uh, leads into Monday Night Football, and it's televised on the ESPN, the main network. Nice. So the best way to watch it, other than live, of course, in person, is uh, with ESPN. That's correct. Yes, sir. Nice. And where in Myrtle Beach is the game played? It's played uh, played on the campus of Coastal Carolina. Uh, The game, uh, the stadium was modernized uh, uh, about four, three years ago. They basically doubled the size of it. They took their program from the FCS to the FBS and joined the Sun Belt Conference, and they've been quite successful. People probably 
have seen a game there. It's got a, a teal uh, turf on the field. Similar to what Boise has with the blue, they have teal there. So it's uh, when you turn that channel, you'll see that teal field. You know you're in uh, Conway, South Carolina, which is on the campus of Coastal Carolina, which is really only about 700 miles from the actual beach there in Myrtle Beach. Nice. So it sounds like a, a great historic venue to play the game at. It is. Uh, like I said, the, 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 everyone's heard of Myrtle Beach. It's the beach destination. A lot of great family fun happens there. So like I said, it, it could be a better spot for a bowl game and uh, you know, I, I personally think this game will have a lot of success in years to years to come. Uh, with great uh, teams want to come there and play their, you know, a, a, bowl, a bowl game. I think you already covered this, but we're going to go over it again. How do they pick the teams that uh, are in the Myrtle Beach Bowl? <clears throat> well, there's a little wrinkle to it now. Uh, about ten years ago, they changed the rule. We used to, you had to go to uh, the NCAA field committee that, that gave you clears to have a bowl game. And then that went with it. They, when they started the playoffs, the 14 playoffs, they shifted the control of the bowls down to the conference level. So you have to have two conferences to sign on. They'll supply you a team. And we actually have three uh, leagues joining with us there at Myrtle Beach, which is the MAC, the Conference USA, and the Sun Belt. So as we look at their seasons in those three conferences and how they, uh, the games materialize, who's winning, who's losing. Uh, who would bring the most fans? Uh, and we visit quite frequently with the commissioners, and and we make trips to games. It, it's a uh, it's just an evolving process. And in the last two weeks, you know, we're down the last two weeks of college football on December. I think the fourth we'll have a mass after across the country which bowls and who's going to which bowl. And this past uh, couple of years, ESPN has kind of stepped in a little bit to to kind of make it a little bit better situation, they've actually moved some teams around that normally wouldn't go to, say, a Camellia Bowl uh, or Myrtle Beach Bowl or uh, Rose Bowl. I mean, not Rose Bowl, but they've moved in teams to, to more or less help the fans have more access to it or to set better uh, competition as far as the games. Uh, that happened with us last year uh, when we decided to bring Tulsa out of American Conference to come to Myrtle Beach, and they played against the Old Dominion. So, uh, so that's how it's, it's, it's not an exact science. There's a lot of politics going on. Uh, but the first thing you have to have, you have to win six football games to be eligible for a bowl. And like I said, we track that as the season goes on. And uh, with 41 bowl games, you need at least 82 teams to have a full slate of uh, bowl participants. And, uh, and we've had a couple of years that we hadn't had enough teams. And there's actually a rule in place for that. And I'm sure people have heard this, but there's a lot of, controversy about it, but there's a rule in place where you step back and look at a team that's won five and lost seven that has the highest APR. Uh, in other words, the best academics and they get chosen sometimes to fill in spots in these bowl games. Nice. So that's awesome that there are a wide variety of ways that you all choose the teams. Of course, uh, I'm out of Ohio, so I'm biased. I want Miami of Ohio or Ohio University to be represented in, as a, a MAC team. Yes, I agree with you. Look, there's some great teams. I saw where Bowling Green got eligible last night with their win. You got Toledo, and of course, Ohio fans travel well. And like I said, Miami of Ohio being right there in Cincinnati is a uh, Definitely has, definitely has a great tradition with their football program that, uh, that most folks would desire to want to have them in one of their games. That is awesome. So where is the best place for the Dreamhouse Nation to buy their tickets? Well, like everything else, it's pretty much online. You can go to uh, MyrtleBeachBowlGame.com and, uh, and like I said, the stadium's been modest. So there's quite a selection, various uh, selection of tickets. A lot of different hospitality club levels, uh, load seating, and the uh, tickets are only thirty dollars for jet, for reserved seating. And uh, like I said, the, the game's December nineteen. Encourage people to uh, try to make a weekend out of it because that's a Monday afternoon uh, game. But coming the weekend before, there's a lot of great places there in Myrtle Beach uh, to stay. Of course, both teams stay on the beach. Uh, at the Marriott, one of our teams, and in, in the Hilton, and uh, a lot of our kids, they still have never seen the ocean, so it's, a lot of times it's, uh, it's very rewarding just to watch these kids get to experience that. That is awesome. Any other events going on during that weekend? Yeah, the night before the game, uh, it's a hangout of, of, of 
place right there off the beach. Uh, we're, we're having a uh, pep rally for both teams. Uh, there's also uh, uh, other events in the community uh, going on. That uh, There's a lot of, of course, different types of events there in the community with all the uh, tracks that they have there. And, uh, and so we encourage people to come out early for the game. Game starts at 2.30, but at 10 o'clock that day we have a fan fest. Have DJs, you know, a, lot of t- a lot of vendors be involved. Uh, we try to make it a fun venue, just come out and have fun, to irrelevant who's playing in the game. That's kind of our goal, and, uh, and the people in Myrtle Beach have embraced this game, and we've had a lot of companies use this as a corporate outing for the, you know, for office Christmas parties, bring them to a football game. So, uh, like I said, it's a lot of excitement, and, and hopefully your team gets in the game. You'd want to follow them down here to play. Definitely, yeah. We would love to cover the uh, the game down there. We do a lot with Miami of Ohio. They're a great program. But, yeah, I mean, Ohio U, like you said, Bowling Green, uh, Toledo. I mean, there are just so many great teams that could potentially be in this game. Western Kentucky even. I mean, it's just a, a really great uh, mix of teams that you all have. Yeah, absolutely. And if you look out for Myrtle Beach, you've got, of course, Coastal Carolina, but you've got Georgia Southern, North Carolina, at, at Charlotte, you've got Old Dominion, and, of course, James Madison just joined the Sun Belt. They'll be eligible for bowl participation next year. And you've got Appalachian State and Marshall with their great football programs very close to the area. And so we're really uh, we're very fortunate to have, some, like you're saying, some great opportunities to have great teams with our game. Speaking of fortunate, uh, last year you had a great uh, team calling the game. Tell us about the uh, team. Tell us about Mike and uh, Hudson that uh, call the game. They, they did an outstanding job. And a little, uh, fans might remember this too. We also, for our sideline through last year, we had Marty and McGee on the sideline. Ooh. I know fans watch it. has been very familiar with those guys. So, uh, so it's very unique to have this only game they did where both those guys were on the sideline along with us. Uh, with Hanson and Mike, so they did an outstanding job calling the game, and uh, and that's quality broadcast all the way around. Nice. So yeah, all kinds of great things going on there. Tell us about your uh, sponsors. Well, our main sponsor has been the Chamber of Commerce of Myrtle Beach. Uh, we have a lot of local sponsors involved with us there. Uh, you know, Carolina Trust, uh, Credit Union, the Hangout, which I mentioned, where the where the pep rally would be located. Uh, of course. Conway Medical Center, uh, and we'll also be heavily involved. We probably have another 30 or 40 sponsors that participate in various ways to help make the game successful. That is awesome. Well, Johnny, it has been a pleasure having you on the show today. Before we let you go, where on social media, where on the web, where can we find out more about the Bur- Myrtle Beach Bowl? Well, like I said, you know, Myrtle Beach Bowl game, man, put that game on there. And uh, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or so on LinkedIn, and encourage people to go online and uh, purchase the ticket and, and support the game of football. I personally believe football is definitely uh, one of our greatest assets we have in this country and, and really encourage people to support local high school, youth football at all levels. And if it's one of your alma mater takes it to, to Myrtle Beach, uh, one of your uh, schools you attended, please have a know that you're more than welcome to come to one of the greatest locations in America to have a great vacation at Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. That is awesome. It has been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you, James. Appreciate you. Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom has products in stock and available to take home today. With five stores and almost 40 years in business, they are Ohio's appliance experts and they help you to get the right product at the right price with a huge inventory. You can save 30 to 60% every day on everything from Bosch and Viking to LG, GE, and KitchenAid at unbeatable savings and in stock. Plus, Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has everything from Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and Dream Cloud mattresses in stock. Stop by any one of Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom's five. Ohio locations today or visit online at appliancefactory.com. Good morning, Dreamhouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH. Now you need to get your engines started because we have stock car racing team game. Chad Massengill and Charles Massengill, the inventors of the game, we are excited about having them on the show. But before we have them on the show, we're going to do our listeners' favorite thing. We're going to give out our email address dreamhousenation at gmail.com that's dreamhousenation at gmail.com and of course our listeners know when we give out our email address that means write in to win prizes so guys 
right in to win some uh, win a copy of the game. Chad, Charles, thank you guys for joining us today. Thank you for having us. It is our pleasure. So, Chad, what is Stock Car Racing Team Game? I'm going to let my, my father, Charles, tell you that. He, he admitted this when I was a little boy, and I wanted him to kind of explain to, to your listeners uh, what the game is from his perspective. Sounds great. Hey, James, without getting into the rules, the game is depicts auto racing using the same structure as much as possible in racing. For example, with uh, six players, 36 cars are used. Less players, less cars. It's for two to six players. Cars are different colors with different numbers. Cars line up two abreast for the start of the race. Cars can make pit stops during caution and or under racing conditions. When cars pit under caution, the pace car picks up the leader, just as in the real racing, and the race leader has the option to pit or not. He can stay out on the track or go into the pits and try for tires. Under caution, back cars move up behind the pace car to abreast, and uh, it's, that is part of it is speeded up by players getting double on the dice. Tires are awarded or missed on pit roads. In order to win, cars must have the tires. Nice. Well, I was going to say, Charles, yeah, I was going to say, it sounds like an awesome game. It sounds like it is a lot like uh, real-life uh, NASCAR. It, as, much, as, as much as I could possibly get it on a board game. Nice. But the part I really want to hear from you is I want to hear about how it got started, how when uh, Chad was a child, you took him to a NASCAR event, and that inspired you to create this. It did. In the 1980s. I took Chad to a couple of races and a, and a qualifying race, and uh, I could see his passion for the sport. And uh, ball sports was just about out for him, although he did play a little football in high school. But he really had a passion for racing, and uh, even before racing was on TV, he would go and me and my brother, to a better spot to pick it up on the car radio so we could listen to it. So that enticed me to, uh, uh, when I was growing up, I, I played a lot of Monopoly, and I, I think that playing a lot of Monopoly gave me some uh, experience to board games or some familiarity to a board game. And, uh, and, I, and, and I, I got to thinking maybe I could come up with something that we could sit down and play racing with. And uh, Chad, my younger brother, and myself, we played for a couple of years. And then my brother's wife and their seven-year-old daughter, I believe she was about seven, she even started playing with us. That is awesome. I really like how you can play up to six players. I think that is great. Yeah. So the other thing I think is kind of interesting, and the people that are into NASCAR know it's a team sport, but the people that aren't into NASCAR or that are casual fans just think it's individual racers. But I like how you incorporated where each team has six uh, cars because, of course, with it being more of a team sport than people realize. Right. And also uh, to get a full field of cars on the board with six players, you, you just you, you you just had to have about six cars per player to have a good field. On. And when you're playing with two players, you've got 12 cars. But it all works out good. Well, that is awesome. And then where can the Dreamhouse Nation buy the stock car race game? Good question. We just got our website up. It's stockcarracingteamgame.com backslash. Again, stockcarracingteamgame.com backslash. You can also find us on Facebook at Stock Car Racing Team Game or email us at the Racing Team Game at gmail.com. I was going to say the website looks awesome. I'm glad you got that up and running. It, it's uh, really nice because it's very informative and it really gives the, uh, the, our listeners a great way to be able to go out and get the game for the holidays. 
Yes, sir. Sure is. Absolutely. Yeah, I think uh, this game, because I got a chance to play it, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there were three of us that were playing, me, my wife, and my son. And my son has never been a uh, big race car fan, uh, but he really enjoyed the game. Like, he thought it was just so neat with the little cars and just being able to move them around the board. He had such a fun time playing with us, and he wanted to play the next dang night. So uh, we've ended up playing it multiple times just in the week or so that we've had the game. Oh, that's great to hear, James. Sure is. That, that, that mirrors exactly what I experienced growing up with friends and family that lived down the road. They would line up knocking on the door when I was a kid, wanting to be the sixth player of a group of five uh, people. And we'd have to draw straws, or, or, or and a lot of people got disappointed. We're familiar. We hear that story a lot every time uh, someone gets the game that's new to it. Nice. One of the things I think is really cool on your website, there's a picture of you all with Richard Petty. Tell us about that. We uh, we go up every chance we get and and get autographs from Richard Petty, and uh, this was a opportune time to show him the prototype that we had come up with. We didn't actually have the games at that time. And uh, he and his son, Kyle, both acted like it was a, a pretty good game. I mean, uh, the appearance of it anyway. Mm-hmm. And we didn't have, we didn't get into discussing anything because of the line of people waiting to get his autograph and things of that nature. But we have left some games at his museum and uh, his daughter, she told us that he, she thought she might could get him to play. That if anything, he he wasn't really into board games, but if it had anything to do with with racing, he would probably want to play. Nice. So maybe sometime we'll hear from him on that. We also left uh, a few copies with his daughter to put in the museum in Level Cross, North Carolina, and the proceeds from the sales of those will go to the Petty Family Foundation or to Kyle Petty's Victory Junction Game Camp. Yeah, that is the thing that I w- thought was really awesome, is how that you've given board games to that, to be able to put in the in the camp rooms. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. That is awesome, that you all really care about giving back to the community. We love that it's a uh, father and son endeavor, that you know, you're know you doing it as a family and trying to bring families together by playing your game. Yes, absolutely. That's uh, why we're doing this, is we're not necessarily in it to, to make money, although we are uh, don't want to lose money either. But at the same time, the, the main reason is to give back, and we're, we're focusing on children charities. Um, and in the racing community and going through Richard Petty is those guys do a fantastic job doing that for, uh, for disabled children. And if any, any way we can help, and even in a small way, that, that's what makes us proud of this. So before we let you go, Chad and Charles, where on social media, where on the web, where can we find out more about you? Well, again, uh, our website just launched yesterday. It's stockcarracingteamgame.com backslash. Also, you can find our link on our Facebook page at Stock Car Racing Team Game. And there you can find out everything you need to know about the game. And also, you can reach out to me personally at my, my personal phone number, 910-591-9101. Awesome. Well, Chad and Charles, it has been a pleasure having you two on the show today. Thank you, James. We appreciate your feedback. Black Friday prices is now available at Appliance Factory. Save up to 40 to 80% on thousands of in-stock appliances and mattresses. Largest inventory in Ohio, Appliance Factory gets exclusive factory buys from manufacturers at huge discounts, and they pass the savings on to you. Guaranteed to beat Lowe's and Home Depot's Black Friday sale prices. Save up to 40 to 80% on GE, Maytag, KitchenAid, Bosch, all the major brands. Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has inventory. They have all the best selections on Purple, Dream Cloud, Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, unbeatable savings. Black Friday prices now at Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom. Good morning, Dreamhouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us today to talk all about Cincy Wrestling all the way from the Savion section is Savion. Thank you for joining us today. Thanks for having me. 
Well, we're excited about having you. We got the big holiday event, uh, Holiday Havoc, at the uh, 20th Century Theater on Friday, December 2nd. So we can't wait to talk all about that. Yeah, let's do it. So what is Cincy Wrestling to you? Cincy Wrestling. So I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. So it's nice to have a nice promotion to invite me back in my own hometown. So what that does is give me the opportunity to wrestle in my own backyard and to pretty much prove to the world what I've been saying for the longest, and that's the Savion section is on top. Oh, gosh, yes. I was going to say there is definitely a uh, dramatic impact, uh, dramatic influence uh, on the crowd when uh, right before your matches and right after your matches, people certainly do notice where the Savion section is. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's amazing. I love it. And I understand you're currently 2-0 and after the first two events. Tell us about the uh, strikes back and the uh, original event. All right. So, okay. So, the first event, it was my first time wrestling for Cincy Wrestling, obviously. It was their first show. And I was in a scramble, scramble match with um, five other opponents. You know, I arguably the top talent in not only this area, but spanning all the way to Atlanta, Georgia, to almost the West Coast. So, I was in there with some guys that I've never met in person, but I definitely heard of them. And I just knew my work was cut out for me. So I entered that ring. I was a little bit nervous, not going to lie, but the save out section, once I heard them, I was ready to go. So, you know, after a couple of close calls, I was able to pick up the W. And uh, that carried me on with the momentum to the next show, which, you know, obviously the promoter saw something in me and decided to really test me by putting me against none other than JTG, you know, former WWE superstar. So that was also just a killer event, you know, strike back, since he strikes back. I had um, went one-on-one with someone that I looked up to as a child, you know, and it, it was just no one better to, to use as a, you know, a ladder, like a step on a ladder rung, you know, just to prove what I'm, all about and uh i was able to pick up the w again you know so that was just an amazing experience all around exactly yeah he's been one of those fellows that uh after his wwe time has been going all around the world winning huge matches and you were able to beat him i mean that certainly says something about you because it isn't uh every day that uh someone beats him i mean it's very very rare uh so for you to be able to rise up and and take that w away from jtg is just overwhelming yeah yeah i was a status say the least i I wanted to go out and party afterwards, but my body was saying no. It was screaming at me, lay down. And I was like, you know what? I got to listen to my body. But I was definitely on top of the world on cloud nine after that match. Now, this will be your first time at the uh, 20th Century Theater. What are you excited about? Oh, man. I mean, look at it. I mean, you just said it, the 20th Century Theater. I mean, I've never, I never imagined... First of all, I never imagined actually being a professional wrestler, and then let alone to wrestle in a 20th century theater. That's that's insane. I can't even wrap my mind around it. Like you mentioned before, uh, we were uh, at Bogart's last time we met, or the first time we met, and that was another venue that blew my mind. So I expect nothing less coming into this one. I agree. I think it's going to be an amazing venue, an amazing event. I mean, we got a great card. I'm excited about talking about it with you. So let's see. The, we'll start with the main event, KC versus Cody. That's going to be a killer. That's going to be a killer. Definitely. Cody Hall, he uh, he won the, the main heavyweight championship on the first show. And that was an exciting match. It was a fatal four-way. And... Uh, Obviously, you know, he's been traveling the world himself. And in Casey Navarro, definitely, he's been doing his thing. He's, you know, he's built his brand up, and it's, it's like two titans clashing, you know. So I'm excited to watch from the back. You know, obviously, I wish I was, you know, in that position, but I can't complain, you know. I like to see, you know, 
I would like to see a nice, hard-headed battle there. Well, dang it, if you're not going to say it, I'm going to say it. I think you should be facing the winner. I should be facing the winner. Huh. You know, who am I to uh, disagree with that? Exactly. I think that would be perfect because, quite frankly, I think uh, you and Casey would be an amazing match. You and Cody would be an amazing match. You should definitely, if if you don't fight the winner, you should fight the other one and then fight the winner. Uh, I'll go through whoever I need to. Exactly, and I think you would. Let's see. So the next... Oh, well, the next match is, of course, your match. Now, I shouldn't assume that you're going to win, but... Uh, I'm gonna. Uh, Jake is, I mean, he's an impressive <laughs> opponent, but he's not you. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the mindset to have going into it, but I can't go in there underestimating Jake Chris. I mean, shoot, when I first got into the business, I mean, that's, his name will pop up often. Like, every single time I would wrestle, everyone would be like, hey, like, this this guy, Jake Chris, he does this, he does that. You know, he's doing TV, he's doing that. And I'm like, you know, wow, who's this guy? Like, I, I want to see this guy. Then one day we met. The first time we met was up in Detroit, Michigan. Shake hands, and then this man just proceeds to put on the best match I've ever seen. So to say that <laughs> he's a tough opponent is downplaying it, honestly, because uh, this is probably going to be my hardest challenge to date. You know, it's, it's, it's basically the battle of Cincinnati and Dayton. You know, he's done more than me. He's been there. He's been to the dance. You know, I've only had a small taste of it. Oh, yeah. He's, and, got, uh, he's got a great career. But, you know, shoot, like I said, he's no Savion, though. <laughs> and that's what I need to prove to the world, right? I have to prove that, you know, no matter how good you are, no matter where you've been, when Savion's got his sights on you, you're just in the way. Exactly. So the Savion's just going to walk in, and they're going to walk out with a W. And, of course, the reason why I have my money bet on you is because of the section. Tell us a little bit about the section. Who are some of the people in the section that really just inspire and, de- you know, give you that passion, that extra energy? Well, I mean, the fact that the section even exists is pretty amazing. I mean, just if, you know, anyone that knows my story, you know, like I, I really should not even have done half the things I've done in this business. And I have to credit the whole entire saving on section as a whole. It's not just one. It's, it's everyone that supported me, you know, from the very first, whether I'm wrestling in front of 50 or hundreds or even thousands, the saving on section has carried me on. And, you know, obviously I want to credit my mom. You know, she she definitely has supported me. And uh, that that went a long way. And, uh, you know, there's, there's obviously friends and family in there, but, even those who I've met recently, that they're considered my family, you know. I It just means the world to me that, you know, people will buy tickets and cheer for me, you know. And when I hear those cheers, it just gives me that extra push. Nice. That is awesome. And then, of course, you mentioned, you know, you know, several fans, hundreds of fans, thousands of fans. And, of course, where there will be thousands of fans, because I understand you have had meetings with uh, Impact, AEW, WWE, you've been talking to some of the high-end promotions, and they've invited you to some of their <laughs> events. So, I mean, heck, who knows? And, you know, shooting the next year, in 2023, you know, it, it could be a little harder to get you. Absolutely. The big guys, and, uh, you know, we only hope for the best. You know, there's no, no promises in this business. We have no idea where we're going to get to, but... You know, that's obviously the main goal is to make it to one of the big promotions. And uh, I just, I, all I can say is stay tuned. We never know what might happen. Now, they have a match, which, once again, it, it feels weird that you're not in it. It's called Mr. Cincinnati. Hmm. Tell us about that match. There's four awesome competitors in it. But uh, when it comes to Mr. Cincinnati, uh, you and Moxley seem to hold that title. Huh. That's humbling. Because there's Adam, Rorges, Carson Drake, J.J. Adams, and Jake uh, Shepard. Those are awesome, uh, good talent from this area. You know, I put my my bet on any of those guys. Um, you know, I wouldn't sleep on Carson Drake for sure. He's mm-hmm. been doing his fair share of traveling, and I've, 
I've kept my eyes open at him because he's definitely one of my uh, rivals, honestly, you know. Uh, Jake Shepard, I've wrestled him quite a few times. I know what he's about. Uh, I haven't had the pleasure of working with uh, the others, but um, from what I've seen, they're, they're nothing to uh, talk down on, I'll tell you that. Yeah, so. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yeah. And then you have, there's a cruiserweight, uh, there's a couple tournament matches that are going to be phenomenal. I was going to say that, I mean, they're just going to be high paced, very action packed. There's a open challenge from Blake Money Wright. Mm, yeah, all good matches. Now, of oh, course, wow. my favorite match on the card, because he's my champion, so I'm a little biased, is uh, the Dreamhouse champion, Icon Lee. Icon Lee, yeah. Yeah, him and Ward just actually went at it a few times. Oh, yeah. I know they, uh, they tore the house down. They did. Both uh, the first two events, those were the matches, and they did phenomenal. Great matches. The first time it was for the Dreamhouse champion. The second time, Adam was trying to take it away from Icon Lee. And now we have Matt Taylor, who I believe is from Indiana, and he was at the last event. And he, I thought he had his own belt at the event. Um, He's definitely held his fair share of titles, Matt Taylor, uh, arguably one of the best if not the best talent in Ohio, you know, if I wasn't here. Yeah, but, exactly. Uh, Matt Taylor, he's a, he's an amazing talent and, um, yeah, he's, yeah, I can't say anything more, you know, to do him justice. Exactly. There's going to be so many great matches on the card. There's an appearance from, uh, Zachary Wentz as well. I I've heard. So, I mean, there's just such good things that are going to be happening at uh holiday havoc i mean it, why wouldn't you want to buy your tickets uh you can go to www.cincywrestling.com and there's excellent instruction instructions to get you to where you need to go and there's is, even a deal going on i believe oh that is phenomenal yeah because alex is doing such an amazing job with that organization and it is just going to be such a great event holiday havoc at the 20th century theater Friday, December 2nd, I mean, you can't ask for much more to start off the holidays with some top-notch wrestling. Oh, yeah, so it's going to be a banger, as the kids say. Excellent. Well, Savion, before we let you go, where on social media, where on the web, where can our fans find out more about you? You can follow me on Instagram at the Real Savion Truitt. You can also find me on Facebook. There's my name, Savion Truitt. There's also the Savion section, and then... I think that's all I got right now, you know. I, I post all my, you know, you know, photos, pictures of fans, upcoming match details, all that good stuff. Well, sounds great. It has been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thanks for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure of mine. Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom has products in stock and available to take home today. With five stores and almost 40 years in business, they are Ohio's appliance experts and they help you to get the right product at the right price with a huge inventory. You can save 30 to 60% every day on everything from Bosch and Viking to LG, GE, and KitchenAid at unbeatable savings and in stock. Plus, Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has everything from Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and Dream Cloud mattresses in stock. Stop by any one of Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom's five Ohio locations today 